This tutorial is part of a YouTube course playlist and a Udemy course. You can access the first phases of this course on YouTube or the whole course at Udemy. Links to both can be found in the video description. In this tutorial, we're going to start a new fast API project. There is a few steps that we will need to work through. First of all, creating a virtual environment. There is a, an additional setup guide for virtual environments at the start of this course. So do check that out if you're not familiar with virtual environments. And then once that's configured and we have created the virtual environment, we'll go ahead and install fast API. We then work through the process of installing a server so that we can actually run a fast API application and interact with it, create a fast API endpoint, and then start everything up to see it all in action. I have created some documentation for a project startup. You will find here that there is a different installation setup for Mac and Windows, creating a new virtual environment and activating it. So do inspect that if you are having problems. So throughout this course, I will be utilizing a Mac or Mac OS. So I will be running Mac commands sometimes and I will guide you as and when there may be a difference between what I'm doing and if you're utilizing a Windows machine. Here on my Mac, I'm going to type in Python 3 and then use the M flag, which stands for module. So when we use Python with the M flag, you're telling Python to run a module as a script. So we want to run, in this case, virtual environment, and that's going to then initiate, initiate virtual environment. So now we just need to supply a virtual environment folder. You can call that whatever you like. I'm going to call that virtual environment or VEMV. So now we have our new folder. Let's go ahead and actually start that up. So Mac or Windows, that's going to be slightly different. So here on Mac, I'm going to type in source and then uh, I'm going to type in VEMV. So notice I didn't type that. I press V. It then looks for the folder. There's only one folder called that starts with V. So I press tab there and that ended the folder name. I can do the same thing for inside of that folder. So bin and then press A and then tab again and activate. So that just speeds things up a little bit. And there we go. So I'm now inside my virtual environment. I can tell that because I have the VEMV before here in the command prompt. So that lets me know that I'm in the virtual environment. OK, so don't get confused. I did have two virtual environments stated. That was just my terminal. It didn't refresh from a previous project. So you can see here on the left hand side, I have VEMV, which indicates the fact I'm now inside of the virtual environment. So now I can go ahead and install Fast API. In order for us to interact with our Fast API application, we are going to need a server. So you can imagine here if we have the client sending some sort of request to our API, uh, if it were just to send a message directly to our Fast API application, Fast API doesn't know how to actually handle that request. So typically we might send a, a HTTP GET request, for example, from our client to our application. Fast API doesn't know how to actually handle that. So the idea here is that we have a, a server package wrapped up around Fast API. So here we're going to be utilizing Uvicorn. So there are other packages or servers that we can utilize. And the whole point of this really, this is a lightweight and asynchronous server gateway interface in actual fact, uh, which will essentially capture the request from the client and be able to then translate that into something that our fast API application can handle. So let's go ahead and install. So pip install fast API and Uvicorn. We can do it together, we can do it individually. Now that we have fast API installed and our server, we can go ahead and create a new fast API application. So let's create a file called main.py. Inside of here, we need to bring in Flask into our project. So uh, from fast API, let's go ahead and import fast API. So this line, we are importing fast API class here from the fast API module. And that just happens to be installed because we have just installed it. So if we go into the vent folder here, we install, when we pip install anything, inside of the lib folder, you'll find a folder representing that. So here, fast API looks like a reference to our fast API folder. So this was downloaded when we installed fast API. So if we take a look in here, uh, see if we can find, 
is not always going to be in the root directory if we go into the initialization file here there's probably a reference there we go so we have imported that in so what's happening here is that when we initiate fast api it initiates the initialization file and of course then that goes ahead and imports this fast api class so that's where it's coming from it's kind of irrelevant but you can at least see that we are actually calling something that exists and that exists because we've downloaded the fast api application via the virtual environment or pip sorry and that's stored in this lib folder you don't need to worry about those details what's important is now we need to make a new instance of fast api so we go ahead and create a new instance of fast api so essentially here we now have our fast api application and what we're doing in this course is now building upon that framework if you like and building our own application with the tools that are already provided with fast api so we could say like i've alluded to this here this instance we've made of fast api represents our entire application and provides the methods for defining routes handling requests and much more so let's briefly describe a, a general workflow of an api we have a client of some description which is sending requests to our api so that might be a get request it might be a post it might be a put it might be delete we'll learn more about that in this course so let's just say a http get request so when we send a request from the client to the server typically there is some sort of url that we send and that url will need to be matched by the server so let's send it to http um, our domain name dot com slash and then hello so that's going to be our endpoint so what happens here that request will be then handled by our server in this case we're using the Ubicorn server inside of our server of course our app is running our fast api app is running and what's going to happen is that this request sent by the client is going to be passed over to our application the first task for our fast api application is trying to match this route against a route that we have defined within our application so if we've defined this route within our application and fast api has matched that route to the request that means that the client is looking or trying to access a particular resource within our fast api application so what we need to do now is match or to connect this route to some sort of functionality so we connect this to some sort of function which is then going to run and potentially return data back to the client so first of all we need to define some sort of root or root handler so we do that by utilizing the app declarator here um, dot get so we're essentially just extending remember what's happening here we create an instance of fast api that's now a fast api application and we're now um, saving that into app so we're now going to access that fast api application and in this case we're going to essentially just extend this fast api application that's created um, by extending it in this case by adding a root handler so that root handler is going to be um, slash hello so now we have that in place we don't need to go on that so now we have that in place we're going to like i said previously we're going to need to buddy that up with a some sort of action in this case we're going to create a, a function which is going to perform some sort of action so we call this the hello function for now and then we perform some sort of action so we'll go ahead and return some data in this case uh, let's just return hello uh, and then the actual data how are you doing okay so when we turn the server on now should we send a request to this endpoint if a match is made it should be made then we're going to simply perform this task of running this function so now we actually need to turn the server on and in turn actually then run our application within that server so to do that i've now added into the docs here a new file called uvicorn and inside of here is some instructions which hopefully will help us and remind us actually how to turn the server on so this is going to be really handy you're going to forget this if you are new to this there's loads of commands that we're going to need to remember so this is going to be really handy now to start the uvicorn server we start with the actual uvicorn name okay so that's going to initiate or determine the fact we want to start a new uvicorn server 
And now what we need to do is actually find our app. So this is just an example. OK, so if we go and think about our application here, we've just created a new file called main and that's in this root project directory. So in actual fact, what we're going to need to do is, first of all, identify that. So in this example here, there might be a folder called app and our project, when we start building it, it will be inside of that folder. So that's probably what we're going to be utilizing in our project. But for now, we need to identify the, the file, which is uh, main. And inside of here, we need to identify where our fast API application is. And of course, what we've done here is we've created a new instance of fast API and we're storing it within the app variable here. So in actual fact, that's where we're going to find the fast API app. So in the main file, and then the app then refers to the fact that we're actually running fast API from app. So with that in place, we can then utilize the reload switch. So that's going to be really handy in development because it means that whenever we make any changes to our code, it's going to automatically reload the server, refresh the server with those new features they've, that we've added in our code. So we don't have to keep restarting the server every time we add new code. So with that in place, we can start the server and you can see there it says missing one requirement, required positional argument path. This is a great example of utilizing reload. What we can now do is correct that mistake, which is by adding the parentheses to fast API. And you can now see that the server has reloaded. It looks like it's working OK. Now to actually close the server, because we can't type anything else, unless we actually close the server. So to close this server, we're going to need to press Control and C. I'm going to use Command and K on the Mac here to clear. If you're using Windows, just type in CLS. And then what we can do is then run. So I'm pressing up and down now on the keyboard and it then provides the previous commands. So I can now reload. And this time, if we have a look at the, the terminal, this time in the terminal, I'm provided some additional information. I'm told here that the server is running on this address. So in actual fact, I can now utilize this address in the browser. So if I open up a new window in my browser, I'm going to type that in or paste that in. You can't see that, but I pasted that into the URL and you can now see it says detail not found. OK, so if I now change the address, now remember, we want to send a request to slash hello. OK, so remember, that is the request that we're sending now to the server. That's going to be captured by our server, of course, and we're going to return some data. And of course, what we return is what we specified. Hello, how are you? So we have now seen a demonstration of the general workflow utilizing Flask API from the client. In this case, the browser, we send a request, HTTP request over to, in our case, slash hello. So we saw that in action. That, of course, then is captured by eventually the Fast API application. It makes a match and then it runs the function that we created. I think it was called, the function was called hello. And that then returns the data then back to the client. In this case, we returned a simple hello, how are you, JSON string. Now, if you are completely new to Fast API, do spend a little bit of time now maybe just adding some more endpoints, just familiarizing yourself. So for example, the slash here, this refers to the entry point or the root directory. So if we were to run this now, so I just go ahead and press up on the keyboard. Let's run the server again. This slash now refers to the entry point. So whereas before we were typing the slash hello, now we just need to send the request without anything. So I'm going to remove hello. And now this is just slash the root directory. And you can see we return the same response. So do familiarize yourself. Maybe just add an additional root and then maybe send something else. Hello. So this is uh, the root now. So hello or just root. And then we have a slash hello. So we're going to need two different names for the function. So we can't copy those. So root and hello. We have now two endpoints in our system. The server is updating, so we don't need to restart the server. So let's give that a go again. So the slash, which is the home directory or the root directory, that's the data that's returned. And now you can see, hello, how are you doing? Now, one of the issues of this documentation is it's not necessarily in order. So 
do take your own notes if you need to. You will need to remember the, the address where the server is running. You will need to remember how to start the server. That's going to be massively important, as well as actually closing it, so pressing con Control and C. It does give you information here, how to actually close the server, Control and C, and then in my case, Command and K, and that then takes me back to the terminal so I can start typing in a clear, fresh terminal. Hopefully you managed to get that working first time. Don't forget you can download all the source code for all of the tutorials. And that is typically found at the start of this course or in the individual tutorial. If you do have any problems or issues, do inspect the code first and make a match. Else, leave a comment, leave a question, and we'll try and get back to you.